Let's take a look at this BBC article. The foreigners in China's disinformation drive. Uh, I'm going to go over this article, not, not the entire thing, but almost the entire thing. Uh, and I just want to point out how absolutely ridiculous this BBC piece is. And it's important that we do this because uh, this is what the West is going to do. In, instead of presenting a credible case regarding all of the allegations that they've leveled against China. This is the kind of game that they're going to play. They're going to, and they're going to attack ordinary people who are tired of seeing the BBC uh, on the internet or on TV lying about, you know, these are, these are expats living in another country, living in China. That is their home, their adopted home. And they watch the BBC lie about it every single day. They live in that country. They see with their own eyes that, they're, that the BBC is lying and they're tired of it. And that's why they're speaking up. Now, the BBC is accusing them of working with Chinese state media. So what if they are? Uh, the BBC is lying about China. We have proven that. Uh, if you live in a country that's under attack, and it's under attack by the BBC and the British government and the US government who go around the world literally destroying countries and now they're attacking your adopted home, you're not going to speak up about it. And if the government is fighting back and you're fighting back, why wouldn't you cooperate? Why wouldn't you pull your resources together and cooperate? It's only natural and I don't see anything wrong with that at all if that's what is actually happening. Uh, how is it any different than someone in one of these countries working with the BBC? Actually, it's, it's actually a lot worse because it's no secret that the British government and the US government want to encircle and contain China. They have entire policy papers available to the public where they can read uh, US policymakers making it their intent to maintain primacy over the globe and prevent China from challenging what they call their international order. Uh, so they're going to lie about it. And let's think about the BBC here for a moment before we get into this article. The BBC is British state media. They are one of the, the, one of the media outlets that helped sell the Iraq war in 2003. They deliberately lied about weapons of mass destruction. And they helped promote a war that ended up getting a million people killed, including thousands of Western soldiers. So this is what they do. China is not the first thing that they're telling the truth about. They're lying about that also. Uh, it's not about, oh, the BBC is funded by the British government, so that's automatically bad. It's no, it's, no, it's not that. It's We know the, the BBC is lying about these things. We've, dis we've deconstructed their lies. Here's the BBC, the foreigners in China's disinformation drive. Now, this is a huge claim to make, disinformation drive. They're claiming China is engaged in a disinformation drive. Do you think that you're going to see any evidence at all in this BBC article that China is spreading disinformation? Of course not. Of course, they don't have even one example. Uh, they present no facts. They do nothing of the sort, which is entirely the opposite of what these people do, whom they're accusing of being involved in a disinformation drive. So let's just, let's just go through the article. Foreign video bloggers denouncing what they say is negative coverage of China on highly controversial subjects such as Xinjiang are attracting large numbers of subscribers on platforms like YouTube. Right, right there, the BBC should just stop and, and do some self-reflection. Uh, and it's not just Chinese audiences, it's audiences all around the world. They know they're being lied to and they're turning to alternative media to hear the truth. They're tired of tuning into the BBC. They're tired of CNN and MSNBC. They want alternatives. Uh, let's continue. In recent years, the vloggers have been increasingly presenting themselves as China lovers, spreading Communist Party disinformation. They never qualify this in the entire article, not one time. What does that even mean? Uh, and if you're familiar with some of these vloggers, and I, I'm not familiar with all of them, but I'm familiar with some of them, a lot of what they do is just deconstruct the lies of the BBC. I've done it also, and I don't even live in China, and I have no connections at all with Chinese state media at all. So uh, it's all about seeing outrageous lies, uh, being angry about it, and then using your own media platform to dispel these lies.
YouTube labels Chinese state media like broadcaster CGTN as government funded, but there is little policing when it comes to individuals promoting similar narratives. So uh, this is this is essentially an article by the BBC pitching the idea of censoring these people, uh, first labeling them as Chinese state actors and then eventually purging them from YouTube, which is what they've been doing for a long time. Actually, it's funny because this really is about an information war that the West is starting to lose. This was one of the few things the West had that they still thought was a, a strength of theirs, and now this is being taken away from them. And again, they're not handling it very well. Uh, and, and they're promoting similar narratives. So if Chinese state media promoted the narrative that the sky is blue, and then these people also did that, uh, would that mean necessarily that they were connected or cooperating? Or maybe the sky is actually blue. Same with Xinjiang. Maybe what's being said about Xinjiang is like what the BBC said about WMDs in Iraq. It's simply not true. Uh, and maybe these people are saying it and the Chinese government are saying it because it's just not true. The BBC is lying. The Western media is lying. These Western governments are lying. Some vloggers are suspected of cooperating with state-owned outlets to spread China's rhetoric to the world, but it's far from clear what really motivates them or how effective this strategy is. Are suspected, which means they have no evidence. Uh, and so if I was a real journalist and I was in charge of a newsroom and someone came to me with this article, I would tell them to go back to their desk and find another topic to write about, because this is not news. This is a conspiracy theory. This is the BBC doing exactly what they're accusing uh, these vloggers and Chinese state media of doing. It's disinformation. That's what this is. Who are the vloggers? Coordinated videos have recently been appearing on foreign vloggers channels to counter investigative reports from independent media on the treatment of China's Uyghur community in its northwest Xinjiang region. Coordinated videos. Some might say that these accusations regarding Xinjiang is coordinated. And if you have this huge barrage of propaganda targeting China, people are going to react. When you make it a big news item, people are going to start talking about it. When they start talking about it, that discussion is not coordinated. It's a reaction to what the BBC and other Western media networks started. There are well-documented allegations of systematic human rights abuses on a huge scale in the region. Yes, there are well-documented allegations. Uh, and an allegation is not actually evidence that it's true. It's just someone saying that it's true. An allegation requires an investigation. The investigation finds evidence. That evidence is presented to either uh, confirm the allegations or dispel them as lies. And I think that the BBC is targeting these people because that's the whole process that they went through. They went to Xinjiang, they took their cameras with them, they investigated, they didn't find evidence of what the BBC was saying. Uh, some of the things the BBC said, you don't need to go to Xinjiang to investigate because at face value, it's, it's obviously a lie. You're being deceived. Well-documented allegations is the BBC admitting that the, it's just allegations. There's, there's no evidence that that's actually happening. And, and then to continue pushing it as if it is true, that is an, a disinformation campaign. The BBC is engaged in a disinformation campaign. The vloggers include British expatriates Barry Jones, Jason Lightfoot, and father and son team Lee and Ali Barrett, who use their platforms to comment on the West's alleged lies and China's government policies. And I like how they put lies in quotation marks as if the BBC isn't renowned for being liars, absolute liars, especially about uh, countries that the, the UK and the US are at odds with. They have subsequently gone on to appear in videos for Chinese state broadcaster CGTN. And, and a lot of this is CGTN using these videos to put on their media platform. And like, like the BBC said themselves, they, they suspect that they're coordinating or cooperating, but they have no evidence of that. And even if they were, who cares? How is that any different than someone working for the BBC other than the BBC has told horrible lies, uh, aided and abetted real confirmed 100% crimes against humanity, like the invasion of Iraq in 2003, while CGTN has not done that. 
Earlier videos on their personal channels focus on navigating daily life within China. More recent videos, however, have become overtly political. They staunchly defend China's rhetoric on topics ranging from COVID-19 to Hong Kong and Xinjiang. And all three of these topics have been pressure points Western propaganda has, has targeted and tried to use to get leverage over China. And if you live in China and it's your adopted home, aren't you going to want to speak up for, for the place you live in and tell people, tell the world that this is not true? If, if someone or something you care about is being attacked, wouldn't you want to defend it? It's, it's normal. It's human nature. Many of these YouTubers have hundreds of thousands of subscribers and their videos are fiercely promoted and commented on by nationalist users. Go figure, China has 1.4 billion people. They have millions and millions of people living overseas. Go figure that they would find a, a message defending their, their country uh, that they're patriotic about. Uh, imagine them subscribing to these channels and following them. But by the way, I also subscribe to them and I'm not even Chinese. So what does that tell you? A, a lot of this content is actually really good content. Uh, there's one that they didn't mention, Daniel Dumbrell. He does excellent videos, and I think they, they didn't want to include him on this list because they're already stirring up a hornet's nest here. And if they added him in, uh, it, it would have been too much. I think the, the backlash would have been too much. But I, I do hope Daniel Dumbrell does do a video about this and just shreds the BBC like he has done so many times with this Western propaganda. Here we go. Never been paid to go on a trip. Vlogging is popular in China, but Chinese video platforms have strict terms and conditions restricting what users can post. Thousands of internet moderators also screen content, which is exactly what YouTube does. There's a certain crisis going on right now that starts with the letter C, and if you, if you talk about that and you diverge from the official narrative, you will have your channel deleted and you have no recourse to ever recover it. And this has happened to people. So it, it's not just China doing this. Consequently, many Chinese vloggers end up posting material filmed from within their homes. I don't even know what that means. This is such a poorly written article. China's 1982 constitution guarantees freedom of speech and freedom of the press. However, Chinese vloggers and citizen journalists are often detained or arrested for making videos deemed to be unfavorable by the authorities. Now, they could have used a million examples, but Maybe not. Maybe the only examples they could have used were examples of agitators funded by the U.S. government uh, who got targeted by Chinese law enforcement for carrying out foreign funded sedition within Chinese territory. In December 2020, citizen journalist, she's not a citizen journalist, Zhang Zhan was jailed for four years after making a number of vlogs during Wuhan's coronavirus outbreak. Now, talk about a lie of omission. The BBC doesn't want to tell you that Zhang Zhan uh, is one of these Falun Gong cultists. They're the ones that produce Epoch Times, which is this US-based propaganda rag that attacks China. It's one of the most uh, obscene disinformation operations out there and the most transparent. And that's who she was working for. So is she in jail because she was doing journalism or because she was engaged in foreign funded sedition? It's a, it's a fair question. The BBC won't, won't ask it because uh, I think because it would poke a hole in there in this entire narrative. Expat vloggers like the Barretts and Jason Lightfoot, however, appear to be in comparatively privileged position with significant access and in some cases facilitated by local officials or state media in China. Again, I don't see what the problem is here. If everyone agrees that the Western media is lying about China, and these people want to speak up about it, and of course the government also wants to speak up about it, I, I cannot see what the problem is with them cooperating. The BBC not one time uh, establishes that any anyone is lying, not, not that the uh, Chinese state media is lying, or, or if any of these vloggers have been caught lying. They, they don't establish that at all. They just suggest it and they just hope you believe them. The Barretts have attended multiple government-sponsored events. In one of his videos, Lee Barrett comments that organizations like state-owned China Radio International will offer to pay for the transport, the flights, 
and a commendation in exchange for him and his son commenting on their trip in state media. In an email to the BBC, the Barretts strenuously denied they post disinformation on behalf of the Chinese government or being paid for content, and the BBC is unable to establish that they are. They, they don't even make a convincing argument that they are. Lee Barrett has been listed as a global stringer on CGTN's website in recent videos on Xinjiang, that is, somebody who reports for the broadcaster but is not a staff employee, and every news agency does this. And again, what is wrong with doing that? Jason Lightfoot is also on its list of stringers. The station built him as a vlogger critical of distorted reports by Western media outlets. And again, distorted reports is in quotation marks, uh, is in quotation marks as if it's, it's, uh, it's not true. The West doesn't create distorted reports. And I, again, I, I'm just going to keep going back to Iraq 2003 the worst crime against humanity this century. It was carried out by Western governments and Western media organizations, including the BBC. They were complicit. They were one of the most aggressive pro-war voices in the lead up to the 2003 invasion uh, across all of the UK's media space, and that's according to a UK university study. Mr. Lightfoot recently appeared in a number of CGTN videos alongside multiple staff reporters on his visit to Hanan. Hainan. CGTN says in one such video that Mr. Lightfoot is grateful to CGN for giving him the experience to explore Hainan, and that CGTN staff and expat vaggers, uh, vloggers enjoyed working together, producing live streams and videos as a team. Wow, wow so sinister. Uh, people all working together to go and explore different parts of China and share the experience with users. It sounds super sinister to me. I don't know any any media organization anywhere else in the world that, that does that, except, of course, all media organizations around the world do this. So again, the, the BBC does this, uh, Sky News. I, I just did a video about how Sky News tried to make uh, a mall that was redeveloped in Xinjiang sound like cultural genocide when, when it had only been built as recently as 2010. Uh, and the, the minaret that they were complaining about being destroyed was actually a 360 degree cafe. Had nothing to do with Islam or culture or anything. It was, it was a bad business sitting on property that was being redeveloped and they sinisterly spun it as uh, Beijing's campaign of cultural genocide against the Uyghurs. So this is all they do. This is all they do is they try to make something benign sound absolutely sinister. Mr. Lightfoot did not respond to the BBC's request for an interview. Very good, Mr. Lightfoot. If you're out there and you somehow see this video, very good. That is the correct answer. That's what you do to the BBC. They are liars. They will take anything that you say and they will twist it around to make you look like a fool. And then whether you answer them or you don't answer them, they're going to try to make it sound like you're a horrible person. Oh, you were trying to evade them because they're a legitimate news organization and you didn't want to talk to them. However, one of his videos, he says he is not funded by anyone but myself and has never been paid to go on a trip. Being funded by itself is, is not sinister. The BBC would have to prove that they're lying and that they're lying because they're being paid to lie. And the BBC throughout this entire article fails to do that. They don't even come close to doing that. Uh, so all this looks like to me is people cooperating with state media because they have overlapping interests. Uh, these are expats who live in a country. They love the country that they live in and it's being lied about and they want to stand up and defend it. Uh, they're using their own resources to do this. Uh, maybe in certain cases they're cooperating with other people in China to do this. Uh, for me, I live in Thailand. It's my adopted home. I know exactly how they feel. I love this country. When I see the Western media lying about it, when I see them funding opposition groups to divide and destroy it, I speak up about it and no one needs to pay me to do that. And no one does pay me to do that. And even if they did, the BBC would still have to prove that I'm lying about anything. And they have failed to do that in, in every in every example in this article, they have not pointed out in even one instance where anyone has said something untrue. Although YouTube does not label any of these pro-China vloggers as being, uh, as being funded or supported by the Chinese government, some videos on their personal channels are subsequently uploaded and uh, uploaded to and endorsed by government media accounts. 
A video featuring Barry Jones was not only uploaded to CGTN's YouTube account, it was used by China's foreign ministry in a daily government press briefing. Again, who cares? So what? What, what does that mean? In the video titled, How do some Western media twist facts about Xinjiang? Mr. Jones claims to have worked for a newspaper in England, Britain's largest daily circulation newspaper for six years. Some state media publications have referred to Mr. Jones as a former British journalist, yet the BBC found no evidence to support this. And, and this is so funny. This is how the BBC catches him. Uh, and his channel is peppered with grammatical and punctuation errors. You know, when you work at a newspaper, you have ev editors that catch all of that. Uh, everyone, or if you're just working on your own and you're, you're typing, you're gonna have typos and you're gonna make, you're gonna make mistakes. And, and the BBC is trying to promote that as some sort of evidence that he's lying about having some sort of journalistic background. If the BBC actually had a case to make, they wouldn't have to resort to these kind of gimmicks. When asked about his journalism experience, Mr. Jones told the BBC where and when he worked as a journalist is not your concern. He stood by his claim to have worked for a newspaper, but declined to give any further information. He also denied being paid, promoted, or coerced in any way. And of course, the BBC presents no evidence to suggest that he's lying. It's unclear why China's foreign ministry presented him as a credible voice at its news conference. Well, I, I've seen some of Barry's videos, and he does what a lot of other people do. He just shreds Western propaganda. He goes through it and he completely shreds it. He shows just how dishonest they're being. He shows how they're lying about Xinjiang, China, just like they lied about WMDs in Iraq or the war in Libya or the war in Syria. That's what he does. And that's what makes him a credible voice because he says things that are true. Why is the BBC considered credible? They don't say anything that's true. They're, they're, they're caught over and over again lying. Uh, they were caught taking money from the British government to specifically do influence operations. Not journalism, influence operations all across Eastern Europe and inside of Russia. Uh, why are they credible? Mr. Jones, who also regularly promotes conspiracy theories, so there's a claim, they never qualify it, they never give a single example of what conspiracy theories they're talking about, denied that his videos had become more political and, descri and described claims that he is part of a disinformation campaign as laughable. Neither China nor the Chinese government pay me to do what I do. The truth is, if they offered, I would accept, and why not? So uh, what is the problem here? I, don't, I just don't understand it. Why working for British state media is respectable, working with Chinese state media would be terrible. I just don't understand what the difference is. China's fight back against foreign reporting. There appears to be a growing network of foreigners being pulled into Chinese state media campaigns. Jason Lightfoot and Li and Ali Barrett have appeared in promotional material for this campaign. CGTN did not respond when the BBC approached it for comment for this article. Why would they? Why do they have to answer to the BBC? The BBC is not a credible news organization. It is British state propaganda. The BBC is, in reality, absolutely everything they're accusing CGTN of in absolute fiction. But multiple sources at CGTN who spoke to the BBC on the condition of anonymity, so we're gonna just have to take the BBC's word that this ever happened, and the BBC doesn't have any credibility at all. So. Did anyone actually talk to the BBC from CGTN? We'll never know because this they used this little gimmick to get out of ever verifying it. Said there is now a focus within the organization to make use of internet celebrities and influencers for what has been described as a fight back against foreign media reporting. More recently, some departments have been instructed to find foreigners to send to Xinjiang to represent us. Now, if I was carrying out a huge, as the BBC says, huge genocide in Xinjiang, why would I be sending foreigners there to cover it? It, it makes no sense. Israeli vlogger Raz Galor has posted videos of his recent trips to the region. Mr. Galor claims he was invited into people's homes and farms in Xinjiang and says in a video he was able to interview random Xinjiang locals. However, it appears he was accompanied 
on his trip by a film crew from CGTN, who later shared footage of his video on their YouTube channel. However, I don't get what this however is. He said he did these things, and there were CGTN people with him, supposedly. And, and then, the experience contrasts with the surveillance, harassment, and obstruction faced by the BBC and other media when attempting to report freely in Xinjiang. Well, here's the thing. The BBC lied about WMDs in Iraq and helped uh, pave the way for a war of aggression that left a million people dead, including thousands of Western soldiers, destroyed a country and destabilized an entire region. Why would China allow people from the BBC and other Western organizations involved in that crime against humanity travel freely in Xinjiang so they could spread lies, uh, help promote conflict, and pressure on China to do the same thing there, to get more people killed. So this is the BBC uh, trying to uh, equate themselves to actual real journalists who go to Xinjiang to learn. The BBC, before they get on the plane to go to China, they already know what their conclusion is, that China's bad. Mr. Galore did not respond to the BBC's request for an interview. Very good, that is the right answer. Do not, do not respond to them, do not, do not give them any credibility. They, they deserve none. And I'm going to kind of abbreviate this because they just get some guy from Australia. He says he's a cybersecurity researcher and he's making all of these unfounded claims that China's using bots and first he says it's bots and then he says it's people who are paid to, to, to do comments and, and the, all of the views are not genuine. I mean, I know, I know some of these people. I, I know a lot of people tune in to watch their content. I know sometimes they put out videos and they're not popular. Uh, so this is just the BBC trying to discredit them and, and try to portray their success, the success of their message and of their journalism as somehow fake, as, some, as somehow artificial. And I know that it's not, because I, I tune into the videos. I, I know people who tune into the videos and who recommend them to others. Can't, can't really say I've ever had anyone recommend uh, for me to watch the BBC recently. And, unless it's, hey, look at this propaganda the BBC just put out, you won't believe it, like this article. Anti-China biased BBC. It's unclear what drives the foreign vloggers, whether they believe in China's messaging or are motivated by the lore of local fame and fortune instead. It could be a little bit of both. I mean, if, if you're doing journalism and it's resonating with people, it's, it's going to encourage you to, to do more of it. Uh, and also, again, these people live in China. They live there. They're not just visiting there. They live there. It's their adopted home. It's like me here in Thailand. Uh, I love this country and I will speak up for it when it's being unfairly attacked by foreign propagandists like the BBC. There's nothing strange about it at all and it's no mystery, but the BBC has to spin it as one because they're hoping anyone reading this article is going to somehow be convinced that these people are not genuine and the BBC should maintain a monopoly over what is and isn't true. The BBC put this question to Lee Barrett and Barry Jones and asked why their videos have become more patriotic. But we received evasive responses, did they? Uh, that, that could mean a lot of things. It, it could also be a complete lie. The Barretts posted on Twitter when approached for this article, describing it as a hit piece by the anti-China biased BBC. And that's exactly what it is, and I don't see how that's evasive. That's direct and to the point. The BBC are propagandists. They're out to smear and attack China. And that's what the whole purpose of this article was, was to go after China and also go after people who are standing up for China. The motivation for China's government media working with the expat vloggers, however, seems clear enough at a time when there is growing international criticism of China for its treatment of Uyghur Muslims and on other issues. Well, I don't think that there's growing international criticism. I think it's just the US and the UK and uh, the, the, the lackeys and toadies uh, of the international community that are going along with it, just like they all did for the lead up to the invasion of Iraq in 2003. That's all this is. It's just uh, another propaganda campaign that the West is waging against another perceived adversary. Broadcaster CGTN is seeking to counter criticism, like its Russian counterpart RT, by finding foreign faces 
who can help sell government messaging overseas and keyboard armies that help promote them. Again, there was no evidence of this at all, this, this second part. YouTube already labels these media platforms as state-affiliated. The BBC is also labeled as state-affiliated. A spokesperson for YouTube said its labeling on government videos is intended to help better equip viewers with information to make decisions about their news consumption. It said that all videos uploaded to YouTube must comply with its community guidelines, and it reviews flagged videos on a case-by-case -case basis. YouTube said that the videos sent to it by the BBC did not violate its guidelines. So the BBC was uh, snitching on all of these expat vloggers uh, trying to get their videos flagged for review or labeled or censored something. Uh, that's what the BBC was doing. And you can see this whole article is a fishing expedition, uh, fishing for justification to censor these people. So it's a huge irony because they're accusing China of being this oppressive police state. And here's the BBC writing a whole article to kind of uh, flag them and kind of prepare the grounds f justifying their, their censorship. It's really, it's, it's, I, would, I would like to say I'm surprised, but I'm not, it's the BBC. However, many users will find it hard to spot that vloggers are attached to state-affiliated outlets when platforms like YouTube do not also label these individuals as being linked to the state. So that's what this is all about, linking them to the state and then eventually purging them like YouTube has done to Iranian state media, uh, what they have started doing to certain Russian and Chinese outlets. As China continues to rise, it's gonna continue to get its side of the story out there for people to see. And they're, gonna, they're gonna do things like this. They're gonna cooperate with like-minded people and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. What the BBC should have done throughout this entire article was show what this information was being spread, but they never did because they know that they're lying about that. They know it's not disinformation. The BBC knows they're lying about Xinjiang, just like they lied about WMDs in Iraq. That's all the BBC does. Well, they do that and then they do this. They smear people who are out there telling the truth and they smear them in exactly this way by insinuating all of these things, but never actually proving it. If you look, this is a, it's a pretty long article and not one time did they find even one example of where any of these people were telling mistruths or spreading disinformation. Uh, the narratives coming out of the BBC, Sky News, Reuters, CNN, MSNBC, and from the podiums of politicians in the US and in the UK, uh, these narratives about Xinjiang have been proven over and over again as absolute lies. Uh, I, I, again, I have, I have debunked some of these lies. They're easy to debunk. It's just like with WMDs. They're making all of these claims. Yeah, well-documented allegations, a hearsay, but where is the evidence of any of this? And they, they never show you the evidence. When you dig in to see where they got their information from, it's from someone else citing hearsay. Oftentimes, you'll see that it's a big circle, it's a loop where they're, they're citing this guy, this guy's citing this guy, and this guy is citing the, the first guy. It's ridiculous uh, and it needs to stop and it's going to stop when enough people step forward and start speaking up against these lies. Uh, when you go through an article like this, the foreigners in China's disinformation drive, uh, and before they even get to the first segment here in their introduction, they're already admitting that they uh, are only suspected and that they really don't know. Uh, so that's the BBC for you. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Think about subscribing, it's free to do and it helps the channel grow. I am not funded by Chinese state media, so please check the video description below for ways you can help support my work, like by becoming a Patreon member. Uh, through Patreon, you can help support my work month to month. I give my Patreon members a little bit of extra content and there's also lines of communication where we can talk uh, share ideas and kind of build a community around this work. To everyone everywhere who has been helping me in absolutely every way, thank you so much. I could not do this without that support. And as always, thank you for watching.